Hey folks, I'm back with another Data with Danny challenge, a part of the eight week series. So Danny has done restaurants, he's done Netflix, and now he's gone into the world of financial services. Yes, uh, we're on case study four, looking at the data bank. As before, we've got some data to work with. We've got some tables here in an entity relationship diagram we're gonna take a look at. For section A, we're gonna be focusing on these customer nodes here. So our table here, customer nodes, this assigns different customers to a node uh, depending on their spending habits. And if their spending habits change, they'd be moved from, a, from one node to another node. Uh, so we have the node ID here, we have the start and end dates. Uh, conceptually, you could see this in a business where you would have customer segments. Uh, so you would divide your customer base into different segments depending on how they behaved, as in, in this case, spending, but how much they interacted with the sites and things. The reason you do this is just to better understand your customers and potentially give them different levels of service depending on how much they use your product, depending on what it is. Uh, so you may want to email them more. You may want to sort of understand their behavior a bit more, how you can convert them to be spending more with a bank or something like this. Okay, I just want to highlight that one region ID here in this regions table can appear multiple times in this customer nodes table. This is indicated by this one here and this little star here on the joining sections here. As always, Danny has given you a place where you can go and execute all these queries and DB fiddle, which is great. I've moved all this data over to Snowflake and I'm going to be doing it there. Okay, question one, how many unique nodes are there in the data bank system. Uh, so this is going to be using that customer nodes table. So I'm going to start there. Okay, uh, so my typical select start, I just want to get a little look at the table. Uh, so I can see this node column here. So how many unique nodes are there? I'm going to do a count distinct of this column here. Okay, and there is my solution. So count distinct will just bring me back the unique values, count the unique values here, which is what we want. So the answer is five. Okay, question two, what is the number of nodes per region? So I've got the number of unique nodes. I just now need to go and join it to that regions table. To do this, I'm gonna go look back at my schema diagram here, I've taken a little screenshot of it. So I can see here that there's a relationship on region ID, so I can join from customer nodes to regions on this region ID. And so joining to this table will bring me back the region name, which will tell me what the regions are to answer this question. I've got my table customer nodes. I'm gonna give this an alias C, and do my inner join over to regions, and I'm gonna call that R. And now I'm gonna to have to state the columns that I'm gonna join on, in this case, that region ID. add a limit on there just to only return 100 records. I don't want everything coming back. It impacts performance as well. So here I can see I've got those node IDs, the start and end dates, but then I've also got those region names coming through as well. Uh, so I'm gonna use that, and then I'm gonna go and count these nodes. Okay, uh, so what I've done here, I want this column. I want to count this column. If I do this, I'm going to run into an error. Yeah, it will tell me blatantly region names not valid group by expression. Fair enough. What you need to do in this case is, is to put region name in a group by expression. All looking good. So all the nodes appear in all the regions. Question three, how many customers are allocated to each region? Uh, so I'm going to start with that customer nodes table again. I'm going to, as before, I'm going to go and join over to my region table to get those region names. And then I'm going to do a count of my customer IDs. That's great. My join's working as expected. I'm now going to go and reduce down these columns to just the ones I need. So the regions and the customers. One thing to be careful for in this question is that your customer can move between your different nodes. So I also think that your customer could switch between different region. Uh, so where I'm gonna check this is I'm gonna order my customer IDs just to see if they appear in multiple regions. Okay, 
I'm looking at the data, I don't see too many that switching regions, but I do see actual multiples in this column. So customer one appears in Africa multiple times. The reason I'm doing this is it will tell me whether I need to do account or account distinct. So in this case, I'm going to want to do account distinct so I don't overcount my customers. So that's coming back with my unique customers. If you're ever in doubt, you can always do account and account distinct next to each other and compare the difference. There, I've gone and just done a normal count versus the distinct, and you can see the difference quite clearly here. Question four, how many days on average are customers reallocated to a different node? Uh, so this is looking at the start and end dates against the node IDs in customer nodes. So let's start there. Uh, so when you're dealing with this kind of question, it's always good to look at one customer just to get an example working. So I'm going to filter this for one customer and then we'll take a look at that. Okay, so I've got this customer, all these different uh, nodes they've switched in between here and there. Uh, what I want to highlight is this value here. So they're, they're in a node currently. So it has, they've input the end date as several thousand years in the future. What I want to do is remove this row from the calculation because this is going to distort uh, the figure massively because this date doesn't even exist yet. Uh, so let's do that. How many days on average are customers reallocated to a different node? Uh, so what we can do is work out the days they spend in each node and then use that to work out an average. To do that, I'm going to use a function called date diff to work out the difference between the start and end date in days to then form my average. So I can work out how many days each customer spent in each node. Okay, uh, unknown function data diff. Uh, I always do this, so change that from the date diff. Uh, so we can see now these different customers, how long they spent in each node. What I'm going to do, you can see here that actually some are in one node, some are in the same node for a different length of time when they switch. So I'm just going to sum this so we get a total for each node by each customer. There we go for customer one. Let's go and remove that part now. Okay, so that's the total number of days each customer spent in each node. What I want is an average of this column here. And I can't do it here, so I can't just go and average this because it's at a different granularity. So what I'm going to do is going to make a common table expression, and then I'm going to average that column. So in this case, I've got that query coming back. I just want to go and average this column, which is very easy to do. Okay, I'm gonna go and round this now to no decimal places because I wanna speak in whole number of days. I don't wanna say, oh, 0.56 of a day. Okay, so what we can say here is that on average, each customer will spend about 24 days in a note. Okay, uh, what is the median 80th and 95th percentile uh, for the reallocation metric for each region? So this functionality is not really available in most uh, SQL providers, but you can work it out. If you have Snowflake like I do, it is available. Okay, so first things we want to do, I've copied the query I had from earlier, we're going to be using that. I'm now going to bring in that region instead so we can start finding the average days by region and then we'll move it on from there. How I've modified this query, I've done that inner join over to regions as in previous questions, brought in that region name into my select and my group by. I then brought that into this query here, my region name, and then I'm grouping by that. The results are getting, if you're using Snowflake, this is gonna be quite easy because you have functions for 
median and percentile for continuous and distinct variables. So I'm going to put those in now, we'll talk about them briefly, then we'll look at another solution. We've got here is one function called median, uh, it works just like average, you would put this around your variable here. Uh, percentile, so this came, this is the continuous version we're doing here. What you do here is state out what percentile you want to be at. So in this case, 80%, so 0.8. Uh, and then you've got to state it over a group. Uh, so this is very similar to all those like window ranking functions, like when we use rank and row number. So you say within group, and then you order by your variable in this case, in case this stays in the node. Same again for the 95th percentile. Okay, so if you don't have Snowflake, you're going to need to work this out using a bit of row number magic. Okay, as we had earlier, so I've gone and joined regions to get my region name to bring that into my query. What I'm going to do here, though, is I'm actually just going to get rid of my average days and just go forward days in node. Okay, so your median value is going to be your middle value. If you were to take your numbers and all of them from smallest to largest, your median is the one that's right in the middle. So I'm going to do that using row number. So I'm going to sort them and then order them. So I actually have a, like a positional number for what the middle is going to be. Your 80th, 80th and 95th percentile are going to be the same. They're going to be just much further down. So 80% of the way and then 95% of the way. So I'm going to do that. Okay, you can see that coming back. So Rn for row number is coming back here. You can see we've got a lot of zeros, that's fine. And then you can see it increase for as the days increase for Africa. So now I'm going to need to go and use row number again. I'm going to want to find out what the largest row number is for each region. And I'm also going to want to go and start filtering by the row number. Now I can't do that because row numbers is a window operation. It operates quite at the end of my query, certainly before I do any filtering. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to put this into a common table expression and then I'm going to start working with it later in another query. So here we're going to work out the position of the last value here. I know it's always going to start at 1, so I can use these to work out median as in the middle value here, and then also work out those other percentiles. So I'm going to use this table, and I'm then going to join it back to the table I had before, so I can work out those calculations. Okay, so now I've got my total row number in here next to my normal row number, I can use this max to work out what the median value is going to be using a bit of filtering. So I've worked out here for Africa, the median row is going to be 192. So I can now go and use that in a WHERE clause. So now this median row is matching this row number here and is returning the median value in this case. So in most cases, 22. Okay, so that becomes my median. If I've got that, I can do something now similar to find the percentile. So I want to try and find where the row number is 80% of the way there, rounded, and again, 95% of the way there. But I want to include those results as well. So I'm not going to filter using equals. I'm going to use in to give me back all these different results. going to put those into this where clause here so median 80% 90% okay so now I get three values coming back uh, so this will be my median 80% 95% I now just need to go and tell everybody else that that's what these are all these other columns aren't being very helpful what I need to do is go and put these into a case expression to go and tell anybody reading this report what this value refers to.
I'm just going to go and now tidy up these columns just to make it a bit more understandable. Okay, so a bit of extra work there. You had to give all your data a row number. You then had to find the max of that to then use it to work out the median, the 85 percentile here. So, but we've been able to do this without the functionality, just taking us a bit longer. That about wraps up for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one. Bye.